Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the course finite element analysis. So these are the session contents for this uh, course, we will be covering that. Mostly we will be focusing on the uh, how to um, do the two dimensional trace analysis by using a uh, finite element method and types of problems, plane stress and plane strain problems. And then uh, this type of 2D domains, how to discretize by using this uh, uh, two different types of uh, element shapes, triangular and rectangular, then how to obtain the shape function for these uh, 2D elements. And then finally, uh, concept of isoparametric formulation and uh, uh, last one will be the finite element formulation for the 2D problem. So moving forward, uh, just I want to declare that all the video contents of these sessions are taken from these books. So students are recommended to um, read these books um, for further uh, details. Now, <coughs> coming to the um, types of problems. Basically, um, all 3D problems um, can be approximated uh, either 2D problem or 1D problem based on the uh, condition of the problem. When we say that this is the problem can be approximated from the 3D to 2D, so we can see here if the two dimensions, if you consider suppose a rectangular plate and in the rectangular plate the two dimensions length and width these two dimensions are considerably uh, larger than the thickness of the plate. So such type of problem can be analyzed as a 2D problem. So in this 2D problem, when we can analysis, can do the analysis by using plane stress theory. So when the load is applied only in plane, that is when the load is applied only in the XY plane, then that type of problem can be considered as a um, plane stress type of problem. Means there is no load perpendicular to the uh, plane of um, plate. Okay? So in the Z direction the body is small in one coordinate direction that is the z direction and you can see the body is uh, subjected to loading only in the xy plane means there is no load in the z direction so in that case stress components in all, all stress components in z directions are set to zero so sigma z then shear stress component in the xz plane and yz are set to zero so under these assumptions, uh, we will get the stress strain relations um, this way. Okay, so this is the um, stress matrix, this is the strain matrix, and this matrix is called as the material property matrix. So very common example for the plane stress problem is a plate with hole subjected to the loading in the XY plane. So there is no load in the z direction. Another type of problem is a plane strain. You can consider the example of long pipe, long cylinder, where the uniform cross section is subjected to the transverse loading along its length. And a small thickness in the loaded area as shown. Okay, this you can see. So it is subjected to the plane strain. So all strain components in z direction means there is a very deformation in z direction is very negligible or it is set to zero. So epsilon z then shear strain components in the zx and yz plane are taken as zero. We can consider uh, example here a typical slice of an underground tunnel that lies along the z axis might deform in the essentially in the plane strain condition. So such type of problems can be analyzed by using a plane stress theory. And these are the stress strain relations from the for the plane stress problem. So what is the difference between plane stress and plane strain? So as far as the stress strain relations are considered, so this material property matrix is the main important difference. And this is for the plane strain condition. So you have to consider this material property matrix for the respective type of problem. Now, so any 2D problem um, provided the uh, under that assumptions, 
can be analyzed by using either plane stress or plane strain theory. So this domain, if you want to analyze by this using the 2D problem, then we generally use two types of element shapes for discretizing this domain. And which are these two element shapes? Either triangular element or quadrilateral element. In that, very common or popular shapes are three node triangular element and six node triangular element. And for the quadrilateral, four node rectangular element and the eight node rectangular element. There is also one more element that is the nine node rectangular element where the node will be at the center. Now, you can use either triangular element or quadrilateral element or even combination of these can be used to discretize the 2D domain. The most important thing is now that um, if you are using this element then how to um, obtain the shape functions for this. Basically what is shape function? Shape function means once you get the solutions at the nodal points then what is the variation of the nodal variable now in the case of structural type of problem the nodal variable is displacement so what is the variation of the displacement within the element so that we can find out by using the interpolation function or we can say by interpolating polluting the values of the nodal variable at these three node points we can get the um, variation of the displacement within the element the important thing when is that the um, the next the first step in the finite element formulation is that to approximate the displacement or nodal variable by using a trial function and this approximation is generally done by using a polynomials so how to do that that we will study here now if you want to so these are the different types of triangular elements uh, this is a three node triangular element this is six node triangular element and this, this is a 10 node triangular element so respectively it is called as a linear element quadratic element and the cubic element so to approximate the displacement within the element we have to use the polynomial as a trial function and the terms from the polynomial they are selected by referring to this Pascal's triangle. So Pascal's triangle will help us how to select the terms, different terms in the polynomial from the polynomial function. Okay. So we'll first see for the three node triangular element. So for the three node triangular element, suppose uh, here let u is the displacement in x direction. So in this x direction, u is the displacement in general and in y direction, v is the displacement in general. Now we have to approximate this u displacement over the element by using a, a polynomial function. So for the three node triangular element, we will use the these three terms from the polynomial because there are three nodes 1, 2 and 3. So terms will be selected this 1, 2 and 3 so that we will approximate u is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 x. So this is the term x. You can see this is x and y. This is the term y. So this is okay. This will give the linear approximation. Similarly, we can approximate the uh, displacement in y direction by using a again this polynomial that is alpha 4 plus alpha 5 x plus alpha 6 y. So we can select the uh, these terms uh, from the Pascal's triangle. Next, if you take, we'll take the another example, six node triangular element, and this is called as a quadratic, because the shape uh, polynomial selected is a quadratic. There are six nodes: one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll be selecting the total six terms from the polynomial. So in addition to these three terms, we'll be selecting another three terms. Right, so here this is the constant term one, okay, one, and this is this this is required 
to rephrase in the rigid body displacement. This is very important. You cannot neglect the lower order terms. You have to select from the lower order terms. Then this a2x, then a3y, then next is this is xy, then x square and y square. So six terms, six nodes. So this will be the quadratic approximation. Then we can write the similarly for v also. So Pascal's triangle will guide you how to select the terms, polynomial terms from the um, for approximating the displacement over the element. Here one important thing should be noted that the terms when you select it should be the symmetric to the axis of the Pascal's triangle. Means from this line you cannot select the all terms from this direction here or all terms from this. You have to be symmetric. So here you can see in the both the equations our all terms are symmetric. You can see here. This will ensure a geometric isotropy. If you do not select the terms which are symmetric to the Pascal's axis of the Pascal's triangle, then this will lead to the geometric anisotropy. That means the element orientation, if you change the element orientation, results will vary. So this should not happen. Now we'll obtain the we'll derive actually here the shape functions for the triangular element. So let the nodal variables that is the displacement u1, u2, u3 be the nodal displacements at node point 1, 2 and 3 in x direction and v1, v2, v3 be the displacement in y directions respectively at nodes 1, 2 and 3. Okay. So, Again, this is Pascal's triangle that we have seen and this is the since for the three node triangular element we have approximate the displacement by using this linear polynomial function we also by using this linear polynomial function where we have selected this is a three terms that is a linear we will consider this only. Now <coughs> let at node point 1 what is the displacement u displacement u is the u1 okay. So at node point 1 u is u1 then x will be the x1 okay and y will be the y1. This will give the one equation. If you go to the node point 2 then u is u2 that is the displacement at nodal point is u2 then x will be the x2 y will be the y2 and at node point 3 it will be a u is equal to u3 so we will get here x3 and y3. So, this equation we can write this equation, these three equations we got and we will write these three equation in a matrix form. Okay, u1, u2, u3, u1, u2, u3. So, these are all terms are written in matrix form alpha, alpha 2, alpha 3. But we want to find out all these constants and that will result in the shape functions once you get these constants. I can write this in this direction on the left hand side. So this matrix will become this is the inverse of this matrix. Understood? Moving next. So we will get and if you find out this inverse of this matrix that can be done and uh, by using the cofactor method. So you will get uh, this inverse of this matrix like this where these terms a1, a2, a3 terms these are defined here. Okay, so all after taking the inverse and this A is the area of triangle. Okay, so you will get this constant in terms of this. All terms are mentioned here. Okay, these, these and these. <coughs> so coming to the this equation U is equal to that is our previous equation. Okay, this is the general equation. This equation for U. So we will get um, this equation here. And we will substitute because we have found out this alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 constant is equal to this matrix. So it is substituted for this. So 1, x, y and this is. Then uh, how to calculate further this? We will see in the next video, continuation of this video. Thank you.